Today we're going to be comparing the gaming performance of the M3 MacBook Air against the M2 and the original M1. We'll be looking at games which have been optimized for native Apple Silicon Mac support, including some pretty big macOS ports released in the last year. And we'll also see whether these MacBook Airs can handle Windows gaming running through translation layers and whether a MacBook of all things without even any kind of active cooling can handle the demands of modern gaming today. So the first game that we're going to be looking at today is Grid Legends. So this is a relatively new Apple Silicon macOS port. And I must say that we are getting some pretty decent performance out of the M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Air, which is on the very left, hitting a nice stable 50 frames per second. And this part of the benchmark map, we're actually getting very similar performance between the M2 and the M3 MacBook Air. Of course, bear in mind that the M2 has 10 GPU cores, whereas the M3 only has eight GPU cores. And in this part of the benchmark, it looks like the M3 is pulling ahead in terms of performance. However, However, on average, the M2 with 10 GPU cores and the M3 with 8 GPU cores has very similar performance. Here the results show that the M1 is only getting an average of 49 FPS, whereas the M2 gets 57 and the M3 gets 60 FPS. Interestingly, with the M3, we're getting a higher minimum frame rate of 46 FPS versus M2's 40. Regardless, even though the M3 is clearly going to be the faster chip, you're going to get very playable performance on the M1 MacBook Air. We are running this game at 1080p medium settings. If you turn it down to low, you're probably going to get about 60 frames per second on the base M1. So next up, we're looking at the classic game Minecraft. So this is running on a native ARM version of Java. And you can clearly see that this game is pretty much CPU bound. So there's generational differences between the M1, M2 and M3, with the M1 chip performing at only about 230, 240 FPS, whereas on the M2 and M3 chip, we're getting about 350 FPS. However, to see the real difference between these MacBooks, we need to look at its GPU performance and the best way to do that is by using shaders. So here we're making use of complementary shaders set to low. And it's really interesting to see that there's basically very little performance difference between the M2 with 10 GPU cores and the M3 with 8 GPU cores. In fact, it's possible for the M2 to actually outperform the M3 and that's because it has 25% more GPU cores, even though this is the previous generation of Apple Silicon. Anyway, it's interesting to see that the performance is so close between the M2 and the M3 chip. So the next game we are testing is Grand Theft Auto 5. So this is a Windows game being run through Crossover 24. So if you didn't know, Crossover is a way of running Windows games on the Apple Silicon Mac. It consists of three main translation layers, including D3D Metal, which translates DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 games into Apple's proprietary Metal Graphics API. This game is also an x86 64-bit game, which means that it uses the res a 2 translation layer in order to get this to work on ARM64 chips. And of course, the last translation layer is called Wine, and this translates Windows into macOS API calls. So the technology behind getting this game to run on an Apple Silicon Mac is quite complex, so it's hard to tell exactly where the bottleneck is. But there is a pretty clear difference between the base M1, which can hit about 50 to 60 FPS, whereas the M2 is going around 55 to 65 FPS, whereas the M3 with 8 DPU cores is capable of hitting the 70 to 80 or so FPS. So if you wanted to play Windows games like Grand Theft Auto V, you're probably going to be better off using the later generation chips. Anecdotally, on the base M1 chip, it felt a lot more stuttery, even though we're using D3D Metal, which I found a lot more stable than using DXVK, which we had to do in the past. So the last game we're going to be looking at is Death Stranding. So this is a pretty recent Apple Silicon native port, which came out late last year, and it looks fantastic even on the base M1, but you are going to get better performance on the M2 and the M3. But I definitely call this an acceptable level of performance, especially considering the fact that we're running this game on a completely fanless desktop computer. Now, a lot of people are concerned about thermal performance. So here what I've devised is a game performance throttling test to see how much heat is actually going to affect game performance with these fanless MacBook Airs. And basically I'm leaving Death Stranding running on all three MacBook Airs, making sure that they're running at an uncapped frame rate to perform as fast as possible. Here I'm just checking the temperatures before I actually run the game test and we're only seeing about 30 degrees on all of these machines. The M1 is running about 47 FPS before and then after it's throttled down to about 44 FPS. Here the M2 was running in the low 60 FPS range and after 45 minutes we're hitting about 50 FPS, a roughly 20% drop in performance. Lastly the M3 was getting about 70-71 FPS and now after 45 minutes we're looking at about 58 FPS. 
FPS. So yes, these MacBook Airs will thermally throttle because they don't have any kind of active cooling. All of the heat needs to escape through the actual chassis of the Mac itself. But even after running these MacBooks pretty hard, they don't seem to reach an external top case temperature of over 45 degrees Celsius. The last question is which MacBook Air should you be buying if you want to do any kind of gaming on it? So firstly, what I'd say is that MacBooks are definitely productivity devices first rather than gaming machines. If you want to play games, you're probably going to have a better time if you buy a, an actual dedicated gaming console or better yet a gaming PC. But if you only had one device to choose, then of course the M3 is going to perform better than the M1 or M2. However, there are some truly excellent deals to be had if you wanted to buy an older generation M1 or M2. And in fact, the M2 with additional GPU cores actually beats the M3 in certain circumstances like in Minecraft with shaders. But if you do decide to end up buying a MacBook Air for gaming, then you want to be sure you don't fall into this 8 gigabytes of RAM trap. So make sure to check out my other video, which I'll leave a link to in the description, which is about the MacBook Air with 8 gigabytes of RAM only. And there I demonstrate the issues that you're going to face if you only spec your MacBook Air with 8 gigabytes of RAM because you're going to run into tons of issues with other games like Baldur's Gate 3, which do require more than 8 gigabytes, especially in later levels. So make sure to watch that before you make any mistakes with the MacBook Air that you decide to buy. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.